Hello, hello. Back with another prophetic word, you guys. Today is Wednesday, so it's prophetic word Wednesday. Not sure who is on. I have to wake my son up at 3.30 today, so I'm a little bit earlier than usual. But today's prophetic word, God says, be faithful in the little things and he will do the big things. So that's what we had it today. This is what I heard him saying. Being faithful in the little things and he would do the big things. And in this season, this is it. Like, this is where we are in this season. And if we can grab this, then I know God is going to show you everything that he's been speaking to you. So just to introduce myself as people come on. Uh, my name is Johanna, Apostolic Prophetic Midwife. And my job in the kingdom is to help people go from where you are right now to where God has intended, created you to be. Like, we got to realize that where you are right now is probably not where God wants you to be, where he created you to be. When it comes to being lost, broken, confused, wandering through life, all these things, that is not where God meant for you to be. And so what God has been showing me is that my job is to help people go from where they are to get into that, that, that your destiny, reaching destiny, reaching purpose. Hey, Regina, how's it going? I've been on top of these prophetic words, and I'm coming with today's word. Hopefully, everybody can see it. Um, the title is, God says, be faithful in the little things, and he will do the big things. And I heard it so loud and clear. He's been speaking this to me about, and let me just check to see if everybody can see the title. But this is where we are in this season. And I always tell people that for me, the way that God uses me is very Issachar anointing. Sons of Issachar, timing and seasons. I felt a shift last Friday, was it? On 3-3, something shifted. Something changed. Hey, how's it going? Um, something shifted on 3-3. And I don't know if anybody else felt it. I don't know if it was just me. But it's time to make sure that we stay focused. The enemy is coming with distractions. He is coming to throw people off. He is like, we talk about this. Last week, we talked about how God is going to make you well-known. We talked about how we dug into the word on this word of fame and not in a worldly type of fame. We're talking about a godly, giving God the glory type of fame that's going to come to a lot of people. It's going to come to a lot of people who are doing what God has called you to do. And in that, following that word, we're coming with the God says, be faithful in the little and he will do the big things. So that's where we headed. And this is what's happening in this season. I am telling y'all, the Lord told me 12 weeks. He said, give me 12 weeks, 12 weeks of focus, 12 weeks of dedication, 12 weeks of doing what you're supposed to do. I heard him say 12 weeks. And so this is why I have been on top of it, because I feel as if the what's to come is in this, this gap of time in these 12 weeks. I heard him tell me like early June, early June is where he is. We're preparing right now and getting things ready. Uh, let me know if you guys have heard anything about 12 weeks. I don't know, but this is what he's been speaking to me. I see love, faith. It's nice to see you again. Hey, Luana. But he's been speaking this 12 weeks to me. In this gap of time where he began to show me, I had a vision before, that early in the morning, where it was like a factory line. And people were working this factory line. And you think about a factory line, um, let's say you were making a car. When it comes to like building a car, these people are doing the same thing over and over again every single day consistent he's been speaking that consistency with the factory line vision that he showed me and that's what his word came out of because a lot of it is where the distractions are coming in trying to throw you off but that factory line vision is where he's been telling me that this is what's going to get people to see it so we talk about faithful with the little we go into the word we talk about what God has given you what he spoke to you and I know I'm called to people who are called to ministry business so a lot of my prophetic words right now are going to speak to those people, but it's also for those who will watch this later on, and it'll be for them later. But for many of you who God has given you the plan, he's get, like, you got it. These next 12, like y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I am running like never before. I am doing what God has told me to do like never before, because I can feel what's to come. And for every single person, I will scream this to the day that I pass away. Everybody loves to talk about the wealth transfer, but the wealth transfer is coming to those who are working and doing. We read all through the Bible when people worked. They got things done. They did the things. Now, again, God can come and bless you supernaturally. I've seen it. But for what this is, God gave you that idea. He gave you that vision. He gave you all these things because that's what's going to bring it in. That's what's going to roll it out. And also know everybody is in different seasons. This is not for everybody what I'm saying right now. But I'm saying to the people who have it. It's in your work. It's in you showing up. It's in you doing it. And I'm just the messenger today. 
I know he sends me with the push and the urgency and the reminder every week to make sure that you stay focused, to make sure that you continue to do the things. But that's where we headed today. Um, this is a good word. Yeah, and, and like I said, I was in the vision and I saw this factory line, but what he began to speak to me was the consistency part of it. And let's talk about two sides of this. It can be in your your time with God, your walk with God. If you're not in a place where you have it yet, it's that walk with God with the consistency. But let's read it. Let's go into word. I'm reading out of Luke 16, and this is the Passion Translation. So the title says, The Dishonest Manager. Like... And I want people to understand when God gives you something, you literally are like the manager. It's God's idea. Just say God is the CEO. But you are the manager managing this thing that God has given you. So it's up to you to make sure you steward it well. And that's the word that he's been speaking to me in this season is stewarding things well. I'm going to read the definition because I took a screenshot of it. So steward, the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. This is where we are right now. Where God is like, I've given you this idea, I've given you this plan, I've given you this blueprint. Are you stewarding well? Are you stewarding? And even finances, y'all. Oh, let me tell you this. If you, what he's been speaking to me is even sowing seeds. One time I was in a season where, I feel led to put this part out. Sowing seeds. Even if it's, I don't care if you're giving $2, $5, $1 seeds, having seed in the ground. I was in a season where I was upset about something and I stopped sowing and people started to come to me and say, no, you need to keep sowing because that's the seed in the ground that's going to be your harvest later on. And I feel led to shift right now in this stewarding, but I feel led to even talk about sowing. See, I don't care where you put it. I don't care if you put it into church, into a ministry, in a business. It's very important when you're in a season of harvest to come that you are sowing those seeds. So I don't know who that is for, but that's another part of stewarding. But the job of supervising or taking care of something, such as an organizational property. So God is giving you this idea. He's giving this to you. Stewarding means that you take care of it. You make sure you do what needs to be done. But if, it's, if we read it, it says, Jesus taught his disciples using this story. Once a very rich man hired a manager to run his business and oversee all his wealth. God is using us as managers right now. Your t-shirt business, your ministry your 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 books that he gave you to write you just you just managing it right now he just wants you to take care of it he wants you to push it out there so start to see yourself as the manager managing what god is giving you once a very rich man run his business and over all his wealth but soon a rumor spread that the manager was wasting his master's money now i literally can hear him saying wasting time right now this is not the time to waste time right now i can hear the lord speaking to me right now saying tell them not to waste time and again, I'm talking to people who you know you have it. Like, you know God gave it to you. Time. You can't get time back. A schedule. Knowing when you're working on what. Knowing when, when, like, really being able to steward this thing well in this season right now is what the Lord has really been speaking to me about. So the master called him and said, is it true that you are mismanaging my estate? You need to provide me with a complete audit of everything you oversee for me. I've decided... To, to dismiss you now God is not going to dismiss us I mean he can but he will work with us he will have us to figure things out again it's a process I want you guys to know this says dismiss you but I'm not he's not going to dismiss us um but it's getting into a place where he says he called him out are you wasting my time are you wasting my money I truly feel like myself like God made an investment in me this is how I look at myself he made an investment in me he spent time developing me he spent time getting me prepared like really seeing yourself like hold on it's an investment that he made in me and so in that it's like okay am i doing what i'm supposed to do am i working on what i'm supposed to work on i really feel i know the lord told me to tell y'all that i would be completely transparent everybody knows that the ministry journey to the kingdom all of the things that god has told me to do but i was in a season where it was like i thought that everything would just fall out the sky and just happen and it doesn't work like that y'all it does not <laughs> Like, if it worked like that, we would be spoiled children in the kingdom, which God can't spoil us. But there's work that goes behind it. And this is something that I've had to learn is that it's the work that goes behind it. And I learned the hard way. I'm, I'm saying this so that people, you don't have to learn the way that I had to learn. But really get into a place where this is something that he's giving you. The manager thought, now what am I going to do? I'm finished here. I can't hide what I've done, and I'm too proud to beg. I have, I have an idea that will secure my future. I have an idea that will secure my future. 
It will win me favor and secure friends who can take care of me and help me. Now, this is what the Lord has been saying to me. It's what he's given you. It's the plan. Like, everything that you are waiting for is behind that. Y'all want to know what God has been having me do? He's been, I, I mentioned this last week where he's been having me study these people, these celebrities. And I've been looking at Justin Bieber. And I, he's been having me pray for Justin Bieber because that boy is going to be like a worship leader. It, like, he's going to lead worship. But that's another story. But what he began to show me is that he was already on YouTube making videos before he blew up. Think about it. They found him on YouTube, and I and I want I pray people get what I'm trying to explain here. When we talk about be faithful in the little things, and God will do the big things. This is when God will show up. I'm using this as an example because this is the example He gave me. As I'm looking at these people, I'm looking at work ethic. I'm looking at how they're getting things done. I'm looking at how focused and how how dedicated they are. Because these are the things that's going to lead to success. These are the things that's going to lead to God be doing the big things. God is not just going to give you the big thing if you can't handle the little thing. So your little thing may be just showing up and doing the videos right now. That's the little thing. And God is like, I want to send 2,000 people to watch your videos. But if you, if you have not shown him that you're faithful and just showing up with the 20 people, we can't expect God to come in and send the 22,000 people. So in that, he had me looking at Justin Bieber. I'm studying Justin Bieber. I'm looking at this little boy. His videos are from 14 years ago, and I'm watching him. He's, he's, he's consistent in putting these videos out at 10 years old or whatever he was. He's consistent. He's like, y'all, I said, Lord, how was this boy able to do it? And then I started to look at his itinerary and stuff. Like, y'all, the Lord had me deep in this, showing me what it looks like, what it should look like for us in the kingdom. And not saying we got to work all day, no. But he's had me deep in this, really looking at it. Like, what does it take? What does it take? Everybody is in this place where it's like, Lord, what comes next? I'm waiting on the supernatural transfer, wealth transfer. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. But for me, this is what he's been having me doing behind the scenes, looking at what it takes. What does it take? I see Lucrece right now. Lucrece is a bonus mom. Let's say God sends you 500 bonus moms right now. Could you handle it? Well, he's having you get ready for that right now. Like, I, I'm like, this is where we are in the kingdom. And the kingdom has to understand that God is preparing us to be able to to be able to steward the overflow, to steward the transfer, to steward everything He's trying to send our way. So as I'm looking at this little boy, he's putting these he's putting these videos out, y'all. I mean, if you go back and look at Justin Bieber, type in Justin Bieber's early videos or whatever. Like, look at this. Look, look at them. Like, really go back because this is where God has had me looking at people who are successful. So I go back 14 years, this little boy's putting this out, he's singing, he's improving over time. And that's the thing people forget. As you keep doing that thing, you are improving. So he's getting better over time, and I'm watching these videos. Because then there comes a time where he has been doing this on YouTube. He's been posting these videos, he's been consistent. This ain't his mom is doing it, but he's the one that has to get up and sing. You the one that has to get up and do the video. You the one that has to get up and make the content. You have to get up and do it. Let's say Justin Bieber said every single day, I don't feel like making a video. Will we know him as Justin Bieber right now? Probably not, because he wouldn't have had the work ethic and the experience and the practice to be able to handle it when that door opened up. So, in the, And he's been in this. So I, I pray y'all catching what I'm trying to explain right now, because this is how he gave it to me. So I'm watching these videos, and I'm seeing his progress, and I'm seeing, but guess what? One day a door opens up. Somebody look finds his video. This is what God began to speak. When we talk about your name is about to be brought up, you hear all these things when people start to talk about your name is going to be brought up. Somebody you don't know been watching you and they're going to find you and your whole life is going to change. This is an example of what that looks like where you've been doing the videos and they see you. You've been doing the YouTube videos and they're like, hold on, they got a lot of content. You've been posting the content and you are on the scene. People can see you and see the work. They can see what you've been doing. And this is where it goes back. The Lord's been speaking to me about shining your light. A lot of people need to shine your light in this season. A lot of people, you got to come from out of behind the cage and come out on the platform so the people can find you and see it. The people, the people who are going to bless your ministry can't find you. The people who will invest in your business can't find you. Think about it that way. They don't know. They can't find you. Back to Justin Bieber. He posting these videos. And guess what? A big manager finds him from his YouTube videos that he had been doing 
over and over for years, for years, for years. In the background, wasn't making money, probably was making money from YouTube, but not like he was when he became Justin Bieber. So then he found him. And guess what? They found him. It was a whole battle and a war. Usher wants him. Justin Timberlake wants him. Everybody wants him because they see what's inside of him. He was a diamond in the rough. And this is what the Lord has been speaking to me. Many of you are diamonds in the rough. Rough. People don't know it. You're just in the beginning stage and he's preparing you. He's getting you ready. But when it's time, that diamond is going to be shined up and people are going to be like, how? How do, we, how, how do we not know this? I want people to understand an overnight success is not an overnight success. A lot of people think that people just blew up overnight. A lot of people think that people just came up out of nowhere. I guarantee you, many of them people probably been posting for years. Many of them people have the, the laps and the reps and they know what it takes to keep going. And this is why they don't give up or, or stop when it's time for them to, when that door opens up. And I think that we forget this part. Like, no. Hey, Sierra. Uh, we forget this part. It's not an overnight success. Them people have been working. It's not an overnight success. Them people have been, they've been practicing. They've been reading the word. They've been studying. That prophetic person has been with God. So don't think when you see people that it's just an overnight success. And this is for everybody here. Like, understand that it was work. And this is where God has us right now. He's like, I want you to put in those reps. I want you to get the practice. I want you to feel what it feels like when things don't work out the way that you thought it would work out. I want you to experience all of that. Because when I open up this door, I don't want you to get to a place where you want to give up and turn around. When I open up this door, I don't want, like, really think about that. Everybody is waiting for something. At the end of the day, we are all in this this walk, this journey with God where we're, 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 he's given us a vision or he's shown us something and he's leading us to go to a certain place. All of us. If you want to put it in the, in the chat, let us know. Like, what is it that God showed you that you are? I know for me, he told me that I would be a business tycoon and a well-known, um, well-known in the kingdom. Those are the two things he told me. Well-known in the kingdom and what God has called me to do and a business tycoon. So in that, it's a process. It's working. It's things that has to happen. It's things that I have to learn and grow in. Things that you have to learn and grow in to get to that place. But in that, he's getting you prepared. He's getting you ready. So, back to the story of Justin Bieber. This is how he gave it to me. For those who are just coming on, I'm, he's basically showing us what it takes to get to that to success. Like, we all have ministries and businesses for the most part. That's who I'm called to. But at the end of the day, there is something that God wants. Like, and I want people to think of success as reaching more people. This is what I see success as for me. I'm reaching more people. I'm in front of more people. I'm helping more people. So that's success to me. Um, so in that, it comes a time where the door opens up for Justin. And he's ready. Now guess what? When that door opens up, now he has to do tours. He has to make albums. He has to go and do uh, videos. He has to do interviews. He has to do all these things. Right? That boy put out five albums in five years. I was looking at it like, how, how did he do this? And the Lord began to speak to me. He said he was ready. He had already been doing the work. He had already been preparing. This didn't come by a surprise for him. He had already been doing it. And this is what God is trying to get us to right now. Not to get to a place where we too, we're too tired. We don't want to do it. I can't get this done. No. Like, make, you have to be committed. And that's what he began to speak to me is being committed. Get committed to your ministry again. Get committed to that business God gave you. Get, get like, commit to it again. And when you commit to something, that means, like, you're in it to win it type of thing. So now the door opened up for Justin, and guess what? He's, he knows how to keep up with this because he's been doing it even as a little kid. And I feel like for us in the kingdom, we don't have that boss. We don't have that person. With, like, you, you work a job, you have a boss right there over you saying, you, you got to get this deadline, you got to get this done. You know, you got to get this done. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have that boss over us telling us to do it. And I feel like that's the biggest struggle for a lot of people in the kingdom. Because then that comes, it comes down to you. You gotta hold yourself accountable. You gotta say, you know what? I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this for the kingdom. I know God has called me to do this. I need to step into this. I need to hold myself accountable. I need to do this. And y'all, I struggle with this a lot in the beginning. I got it now, okay? I got it. I got it now. I learned my lesson. And I had some rough lessons that I had to learn because of it. But you gotta get to a place where you just, you. if he is the CEO and you are the manager, I mean, your CEO tells you what to do. You know what you need to do. You just got to do it. 
You just got to run the play. You just got to get things done. You just got to do it. And so, I'm looking at all the work that he, this boy is doing. Now, granted, he wasn't doing it with God in that moment, so it burned him out. And this is the difference between the world and kingdom. When you do it with God, you're doing it from a place of peace. You're doing it from a place of rest. You never really get it burnt out when you do it with God. I mean, for me, I never really burn out much. Like, I might get tired sometimes, but I'm never too much burnt out. But what I found is that he wasn't doing it with God. So at some point, his mental health started to decline. He couldn't keep up with it. It was too much. But when we do it with God and we keep him in the forefront and we give him every detail, then that's when it's, there's an ease there. We can just keep up with everything. I said that earlier. I got relaxed and I don't finish. See, it's that finishing part. And that's, it's real easy to start a thing. But you got to see it through, y'all. Like, we got to get to a point in the kingdom where we see it through. These, everything that God is having us build, like, it is going to. And the thing that he started to show me with the factory that I saw is that he said everybody plays a part. Different people were working on different things, but it all came together. And I will always say this. The devil, the devil, witches and warlocks and whatever, priestesses, they not getting tired. They not, they, they, I say it all the time. They practice. They study. They in a covens, whatever they call it, whatever they do, they doing it. They people are out here seeking. Can you help me? Can you show me how to do this? Like, but it's just, I don't, like, we gotta get it, y'all. We gotta, we gotta get it. We got. I feel like this is like a team meeting today. Like, we gotta get it. We gotta get to a place where it's just like, no, I'm about to rise up. They do. And y'all know, like, I'll be on TikTok and I'm scrolling. They got a whole thing called Witch Talk. Where they doing their thing and they out here, out here doing it, leading people astray. But it's like, I just don't, I mean, I know and I've been there and I know what it feels like, but it's like that in-between that happens where you haven't seen anything happen yet and you get in that place where it's just like, but am I, am I supposed to be doing this or is this where I'm supposed to be? And I know that in-between place, but you got to push through that in-between. Because everything that you're waiting for is pushed past the in-between. And I don't know if y'all understand what the in-between is. It's like when God told you to do a thing and he called you to do something and you start to step out into it. But then you're in the middle, like in the middle of the ocean kind of thing. You're looking around like, what am I supposed to do? What do I, What comes next? I haven't seen the promises yet. I haven't seen everything yet. I haven't seen it yet. So we know that like that in-between part is the hardest part. But if I can give anybody any advice right now, I'm telling you, if you push through that in-between, everything is on the other side. Like y'all, if I would have given up on my in-between, I would be so mad at myself. I would be so mad at myself. Like girl, all you had to do was push through the in-between. That in-between, just imagine being out in the ocean and you at the shore and it's real comfortable at the shore you can you can run back if you want to but when you start to step out into the deep you start to step out maybe you leave a job or maybe you launch a business and maybe you your business costs more to run it and all these things now you got to lean on him more that in between that in between does not feel good and that in between is where a lot of people settle a lot of people waste time a lot of people want to run back to the, to the shore Cause when you're in the between, you, you start to look. I know this in between well because God called me off my job, and I y'all know if y'all know me, I worked in corporate. I have six figures, um, corporate job, leadership, a uh, higher up leadership. And he told me to leave. That was my comfort safety net. But I wouldn't have become who I am now had I not left that job. So then I had to step out of the boat and go into the middle of that in that in between, and say, Oh man, this this I don't know what's going on up in here. But I'm telling you, there is character that's that's developing in the in-between there are shifts and changes and mindsets and trust and your level of of relationship with god in that in-between if you run from the in-between you will never become that full version of yourself now i promise you you won't because a lot of people want to run from the in-between and god is like no stay right here we do we do a real work in this stay in that um Calling my business i'm all up in it i'm working now that in-between i'm in that right now with school and ministry yeah and ministry for those, I, like I said, I know I'm called to a lot of people. And the Lord began to tell me, he said, you're not just called to people with ministry. He said, you're called to people who are building corporations, who are building, what, what word did he use? Um, empires. Empires. He said, no, you're called to people who are building empires. And for us, that in between, that's when all the pieces are all over the place. And you're like, what comes next? And what am I supposed to work on? You don't know. Let me know if y'all know I'm who I'm talking to. I know who I'm called to. 
I'm causing people who are building empires, and you got all these pieces of the puzzle, and you're trying to figure out what goes where, and how am I supposed to keep up with this, and everything all over the place, and God gave me all these ideas. How am I supposed to keep up with this? And now you're in the in-between where it's just like, <laughs> I don't even know what to do. Like, <laughs> what is this? But for those of you, if you know I'm talking to you, um, and you, you know that's how it is, Sometimes you want to run away, you want to put everything down, and I will always give everybody this advice, like, don't set it down. My biggest fear was that I could not get to a place where I put put this down. God has given me all of these ideas, all of the, the like, I have, I'm like five books in, y'all, like, I, anyway, listen, manuscripts, because it's not time for me to put my books out. Five manuscripts ministry a business a membership program health and fitness like y'all i do so much and one of the girls in the membership program she was laughing she was like we thank you so much for being the coach the mentor the teacher the apostle the prophet like she was naming all of it and it's just like you how am i supposed to keep up with all of this when do when am i what because i mean when am i what but in that listen like okay i see everybody you right i'm coming back Yes, you definitely talk to me. Listen, I know who I'm called to. You don't just have a ministry. You don't just have a business. You are building an empire. And the reason it seems so hard, the reason it seems so difficult, is because of how colossal it will be. But it's preparing you to be able to handle it. Like we talked about with Justin Bieber. Let's say God is preparing you to be this ministry leader, business tycoon that he told me that more than likely for you guys, author, writing all these books. All of these things. The same way Justin Bieber was putting those videos on YouTube, singing, developing his voice, learning how to sing, learning how to perform. This boy was on the street, on stairs, at like 10 years old playing the guitar. Like, you can't force a little kid to do that. They have to want it. Oh, you gotta want it. Number one, you gotta want it. How? The Lord's been speaking this to me lately. This, how bad do you want it? I used to have it on my, my um, computer here. Because when you, when you, and I'm going to do this, I, I can't go into what God gave me this morning because we're doing a, a, a virtual vision board party. It's going to be free. So for all you guys who are here, next week I'm going to put the link when I do next week's live. Because he told me to do a free vision board party because a lot of people don't understand that um, I, you got to see it before you see it. And this is why God shows you that vision. He shows you where he wants to take you first because then you have to want it. He wants you to want it. So God showed you that you are going to be a business tycoon. He told you you're going to have this booming t-shirt business, Regina. He told you you're going to be an encourager. You're going to be a, a, a healer, prophetic voice, all these things. He showed you because then he wants you to want it. You got to want it. So it's like, man, God showed me. First, you got to believe it. And then you got to want it. So God tells me you're going to be well known in the kingdom for what it is that I'm having you doing. And you're going to be a business tycoon. I want that, God. You spoke this to me. You showed this to me. I believe it. So what is it that I have to do to get there? And then that's when you go back to him. He starts to give you the pieces of the puzzle and you start to build it. You start to create it. You start to launch it. You start to do it. But you got to want it. My question to everybody on right now or who will watch it is how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to help heal people? How bad do you want to bring people out of darkness? How bad do you want to evangelize and, and, and help people? How, may, how bad do you want God to use your prophetic gift to help people get a glimpse of where he wants to take them? Because that's what it is. Like He's basically using you to tell them, oh, this is where you're headed. Encouraging them. And you know, the prophetic to me is just encouragement. Like I'm, I'm encouraging you because this is where I see God taking you. And I want to speak this and say this because I want to encourage you to want it. I want to encourage you to want it. That's what I want you to want it as bad as God wants it for you. So you got to get it in you. Like you got to want it and God will work with you. He will develop you. He will get you prepared. He will do all these things. But at the end of the day, he will never force us to do anything. God is a gentleman. He's not going to force you to build the ministry. He's not going to force you. He won't force it. Now you might be uncomfortable. Where you know you in this space and it's just like, I am uncomfortable. He may tell you to leave a job and you're just so uncomfortable to the place where you will eventually move. But he won't force you. That's on you. The question is, how bad do you want what God spoke to you, what he showed you, what he said to you? 
I would have been like Pookie in New Jack City. Hey, Nakisha, how's it going? Listen, y'all, this, I'm telling you, I don't have notes. I, I literally, my journal is closed today. He told me, I, I, I tried to sit down to write something out. I could not write anything today. I could not write anything. Y'all know, usually he'll tell me, like, write it in my journal. All I have is the Bible right here with a blank post-it note. He would not allow me to write anything. So whatever's coming out, this is what I'm supposed to be saying right now. Um, because I couldn't write, I couldn't write anything at all today. Um, so it's going back to it, y'all. We got to want what God wants for us. He didn't, <sighs> a lot of people ask me, how do you know, when it, how do you know it's God? How do you know it's God? Because it's more than likely something that I cannot do on my own. If it's something that's very easy and I can just do it by myself, then it's, it may be God, but where's this strap? Okay, right. It may be God and it may be something that I'm just really good at. But for the most part, those big visions and those dreams, like, if I cannot do it by myself on my own, more than likely it's God. For me, my ministry, I can't do that on my own. It's too much. The business side of things, I can't do that on my own. I need strategy. I don't know what 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 is this. I I need you to give me the strategy. And for a lot of people, if you cannot do it on your own, that's when you know it's God. You don't know how to start a ministry. I didn't know how to start a ministry. I didn't even know about fivefold. Okay, more than likely it's God. You don't know how to start a t-shirt business. Okay, that means you have to lean and depend on God to be able to get the plans and the strategies to do it. All right, more than likely it's God. You get what I'm saying? Like when it's a God thing, we have to depend on Him. We have to go back to Him, and it deepens our relationship with Him when it's a God thing. And I think sometimes people think that if God gives us something, it's supposed to be easy breezy. We, it's just supposed to come to us. No, He wants you to keep coming back to Him. He wants you to keep seeking him. He wants you to keep coming and saying, Lord, you know, I started the t-shirt. I keep talking about this t-shirt business. How many people on here got a t-shirt business? Oh, I see Renee. I see Renee. I see Renee. Hey, girl. Um, I'm, I keep bringing up this t-shirt business. And I, I feel like even with t-shirts, a lot of people don't understand. Like when people have t-shirt businesses and things like that, you know, there's two sides of it where people feel encouraged. You were, Look at Nakisha, too. Listen, God, I just will definitely stretch you. And that's the thing. Me, I just haven't pushed it. Oh, my gosh. Look at all these people with T-shirts. Okay. Because at the end of the day, when people wear, you know, kingdom apparel, they, they feel encouraged. They feel motivated. There's two sides to it. There's some people who God may tell you, and I've learned this just, like just in membership and working with people, where God will tell you, I want you to make these shirts in-house. I want you to create these shirts. And when God tells you that he wants you to make them versus to have like um, online where they're in a factory and they send them out. And I don't know who this is, but when he wants you to make them, more than like he may want you to pray over them. Your prayers. A lot of people may pray over their shirts. They're praying over the shirts. They're praying, Lord, I pray right now if this shirt is about seeking and going deeper in you, that the people who wear this shirt, are want, they will want to seek you and go deeper in you. Like a lot of people, he may tell you to make your shirts. Because he probably wants you to pray over them. Um, but then there's other sides where he's just like, I just want you to make apparel. And for a lot of people, your apparel is what will fund other parts. We're building empires, right? A lot of people don't don't think that he may have you do one thing, which will fund another thing. So you start to do apparel over here, and that's funding, funding your ministry, your, your business. You know, for me, he used to have me do a lot of um, prophetic consultations in the beginning because it funded everything. So don't think, you know, it may fund other things to build up your empire even more. Just caption this confirmation. Okay, pretty. I'm glad to hear that. This, I'm telling y'all, the caption, I heard, this, this is all I have right here. The Lord spoke to me, this to me while I was getting, doing my dishes. I was getting dishes ready maybe two days ago. And I heard, after I saw the vision, I heard him say, faithful in the little things. And I want y'all to get that part. Be faithful in the little things and God will do the big things. When you are faithful with the little things. When you do the little things God tells you to do. Let's say God tells me to do these Facebook lives. Staying consistent, Justin Bieber style, doing these videos every single Wednesday. Let's say somebody sees me and they're like, oh, we want to fly you to XYZ. I know I'm called to Africa. We want to fly you to Africa and we want you to speak here. But I was consistent in the little things. And now God is opening the door for the bigger things. It's just an example. But this is what it looks like when God says faithful in the little things and he will do the big things. Because when he sees that you can handle it, that you can do it, that you're flowing, that you're not going to give up, that even when he opens the door, like, that you won't crumble when he, mm, that you won't crumble when he opens the big door. 
That's all it is. Being faithful in the little things means that God knows that you won't crumble when he opens the big door. And I say this to a lot of people. Let's say, go back to the t-shirt business. You've been putting t-shirt business, you've been putting t-shirts out, one here, two here, five here. But let's say somebody's church wants your t-shirts that says, we love God. A whole church wants it, and they want 500. Can you handle that? Have you been doing the, the, the laps to be able to handle that? And I think that sometimes people want God to just come in and blow it up and everything. But it's a process. It's progress. Because then you may get used to making one shirt, five shirts, ten shirts. Then you might get an order where God opens the door. He's like, all right, 20 shirts. And guess what? It's stretching you to be able to handle more. And I, and I, and I, 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 I pray that people understand that part and they don't think that God is just ignoring you and you haven't seen the full fullness of what he spoke to you. I would thank God for not giving me everything at one time. I thank him for not just me just going viral or something and it just blew up overnight. Because just like with the t-shirts, one to five, now you learn how to make five. Five to ten, now you learn how to make ten. 10 to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 500. Oh, we got to get a bigger space now. But you were in that process of learning it over time. So I pray right now, Lord, that people who may be in a place of feeling discouraged because they haven't seen the fullness of everything, that they haven't seen you just step in and just give them everything that they have been wanting. That's how the enemy works, y'all. The devil will come in and tempt you to give you everything that you want, but you, you may not be able to handle it. This is why you see people getting crushed by fame. Crushed. These people get the lottery, win the lottery, and they can't handle the money, and then they don't have anything three years later. They were not prepared for that blessing. They were not prepared for what, for what was coming to them. Think about it. This is why God prepares us. This is why it's a process. This is why He had. you may not see everything in the beginning. And I feel a lot of people are discouraged right now. Lord, if you can show me what's going on in the spirit realm. Y'all, I got to get my son in a little bit. But y'all know I don't have notes, but I got to go up and see what's happening. Um, if you can show me what's going on in the, in the spirit realm when it comes to people just waiting on you. This faithful with the little things, their minds, their mindsets. Um, I see people like typing on a computer or like typewriters or something. But it's like banging on it because it's frustration. This is probably what I'm seeing. I see people who are frustrated. Like you've been working and you've been doing the things. Yes, you have. But I feel that what he's showing me right now is people are frustrated right now. It's like you've been doing it. Like, Lord, I've been doing it and I was, or I was doing it. And I started to do the things that you told me to do, but I didn't see anything change. I didn't see anything happen. I didn't see any fruit is what I'm seeing here. I didn't see any fruit from it. And so this is where he has us right now, where he wants people to understand that faithful with the little even with your finances, faithful with the little. You want God to step in. Let's say you have a spending problem. And God says you're going to be a kingdom financer. And you have a spending problem that you haven't been able to get a handle on. You go out and then you look up. You go to Target. You go and spend all your money. You don't know what happened. But then you expect God to come and blow your mind and your finances. And God is like, you haven't been faithful with the little. You haven't been stewarding it well. Because if he gives you all of the finances and the money, what's going to happen? You're not going to know how to steward it well. You're not going to know, I should save this much. I should give this much away. I should buy this. I should make sure my ministry has this. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, even in finances, faithful with the little. And this is something that the Lord has understood. I mean, that we have to understand. It's faithful in the little. It's just that, like, I, I hear it so loud. And I see, Lord, if you can show me what goes, what happens once people begin to get this part. I literally see hearts opening up right now to be able to understand. Like, I, I can feel hearts right now or see hearts, feel it too, opening up. Like, man, when you've been in this place where it's just like, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it and I'm so frustrated and I just don't understand what's going on, God. But I pray right now, Lord, that your people's hearts are being softened. That they're not frustrated and discouraged because they haven't seen full manifestation of what you said. But they understand that you just want us to be prepared you don't want us to receive it like the enemies can't where they just get it and they can't take it and they're suicidal and they just don't know how to handle it. No, we don't want it to over overwhelm us. Although it may be blessings that make your head spin like Amos 9. That's a difference. We prepare for it. We're ready for it. When, it, when, the, when one thing after another comes, this is Amos 9 right now. 
Because it is coming for many people. But in that, that's why God prepares us. Think about that 500 t-shirt order. That's one thing after another. You get all these hits, but guess what? You were prepared for it. And that's all what he's speaking to us right now. He's like, I just want my people to be prepared for what it is that I want to do for them. I'm going to do it, but I want you to be prepared. So don't be upset and frustrated because throw it Terry. It may take a little while. Habakkuk, throw it, like, throw it may take, like, throw it may take a while. It still will come to pass. But I feel like sometimes we delay ourselves. Just imagine if you wanted to go to college and all you had to do was take the ACT, SAT. And that's all you had to do to go to college. But you just never took the test. You never did it. Would you have a score to be able to apply to colleges? Probably not. And I feel like sometimes we delay ourselves. Sometimes we delay ourselves. When God is like, I've given you everything and you know, all I need you to do is just do it and be faithful in the little and just keep doing it consistently. But when we get to a place where we know, okay, I know if I stay in it, look, I just need to take my G. I just need to do it. I just need to do it. Like, it's really that simple. He's been speaking to me, and maybe this is another word. He's been speaking to me about um, don't hold it all for something. I can't remember. It may be another word. But this is what he's been speaking. So you write on pretty. Like, things like that, where it's just like, I just need to do it, then we just have to do it. And it's just in that breathing and just saying, I need to do it. Uh, let me, there's one more thing you told me to read. Um, da, 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 da. The one who faithfully manages, and this is Luke 16, 20, no, 16, 10. The one who faithfully manages the little he has been given will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. That's that's what it looks like, y'all. Where you may go from, we talk about influence, we talk about authority, promoted. Think about how you are promoted on your job. You may have a job, you may have a position in a, at a place. And when you show that you're, you're dependable, when you show that you can handle it, when you show that you're a leader, when you show that you can do all these things, what happens? More than likely the boss is going to be like, oh, you're doing a great job. I feel like we have a position to open up. Would you want to apply? Or you go to the boss and say, I feel like I should be a, I would be a great fit for this position. The very way that they work in jobs is what the kingdom is like. When God sees that you can handle it, when God sees that you can receive more, you, it says it right here in the Word. The one who faithfully manages the little he has been given will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. This is what it is. And when we are not consistent, when we are not faithful with what God has given us, that's when we get in a place and it's like, ah, I don't really know what's going on. I'm telling y'all, like, it's just like a job where God sees that you can handle it and he gives you more. He gives you more. He, he gives you more. So when much is given, much is required, that kind of thing. If he gives you more, then that means he knows you can handle it. My state license, we'll do it. We'll look. And I think that it's just like, I keep saying this, every platform, it's just like the thing that you have been sitting on, scared to do, worried about doing, that thing will probably open the biggest doors up for you. That's really it for me in my in my life in my experience. The things that I sat on, it was the biggest breakthrough on the other side of it because I wanted to, I wanted to stay in a comfort zone. I didn't want to feel it. I didn't want to experience it. I didn't know, or I was afraid of the unknown. I was self sabotaging little things like that. But this is where God began to tell me rip the band aid off. As soon as I get to a place where I I don't want to move on something I know I need to do, I see I hear it in my head because I heard the Lord tell me that He said rip the band aid off. Every single time I get to a place where I'm like, ugh, ugh, I know I need to do it, I, I immediately rip it off. So that may be what it is for you guys. Afraid of the unknown, yes, but it's like you get to that thing that's trying to block you and stop you, it's because there's so much on the other side of it. Sometimes we hinder ourselves, sometimes it's warfare, whatever. But for me, usually, rip the band-aid off, listen, and, and every single, it works, like, Every time, y'all, I'll be in a place where I can feel like that that resistance coming. I'm trying to think of an example. I actually have a piece of paper here. <laughs> my taxes. I don't want to do my taxes because I'm like, Lord, um, what's about to happen? Um, what's about to happen? But it was a little resistant. But in the end, it turned out well. It wasn't even a problem. But I was afraid of what was coming on my taxes. I didn't really know. I wasn't sure because a lot changed this past year. And so in that, everything like it was just like, oh. What? One, I don't have as much stress. Two, it was a breakthrough. 
So rip the band-aid off. That's me. I finally set my head for nursing school. And now I'm week five in the LPN program. And I thank you God for favor. I moved back. Look. She probably was afraid to do it. She was probably afraid to take the test. And look. She took it. She's in week five. This is what I'm saying, y'all. We got to rip the band-aids off. We got to realize how bad we want it. We got to want it. You got to want it. That's the key right there. You have to want it. You want to get to want what God wants for you. Um... But those who cheat with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. This is all God is trying to do for us, y'all. Well, he has big plans for our life. Huge plans for our life. I'm not saying everybody is going to be like, but for many, many of you, especially if you call to me, like, but what God does through me, like, you have an empire in you. You just got to burp that thing out. It's just pieces and parts and little things that you have to burp out to see it, that he will show you a part of it, but receive more. That that receive more is just loud because everybody is like oh god show me the next place show me the next thing and he's like i'm trying to give you more i just need you to do it on my personal finance and business like look if you've been to everybody the finances that's because it's something that he more than likely god's gonna call you to finance this year it's something in it like many people who may have struggled with finances or you didn't grow up around finances and then all these things god is probably going to use you as a kingdom finance more than likely a kingdom financer where he because I already know you have great authority like I can see you in the spirit realm as like very strong and big like people who are big in my visions shows authority so I can see you having great authority in the spirit realm so people who have great authority that means that that, that influence is there people will more than likely be drawn to you like I literally see you like a huge light um and in that, I also see him like a, I see like a green checkbox for a kingdom financer for you. And that's why the enemy wants you to be afraid of that personal finance and business class. Because you are called to, to finance, not, not necessarily finances, but as a kingdom financer, God is using you to distribute it throughout the kingdom. Knowing how to keep up with your finances, knowing how to keep up with your money will allow God to give you more. And as you sow seeds and pour out, he's going to bring more into you. This is why I mentioned sowing seeds in the beginning. I said this earlier. I said, in this season, you want to plant seeds. Um, and I can't remember what I said because I don't have notes. Whatever I said for those who are here. But in that, that's the thing. Like, he wants you to be able to manage your finances so that your finances are good enough and well enough to be able to pour out, to be able to receive more. Because let's say God wants to give you abundance. Like he wants it. So he can find that he's giving it to you to pour it back out. Imagine you know what it feels like to start a ministry of Sierra and not knowing how to pay for things and what goes where and all these things but you can step in and help somebody who may be starting out and say you know what i didn't have this when i started my ministry let me help you that's kingdom financer let me help you because now god is giving you more to give it and make sure you give it away because it's like this wheel i always say when it comes to finances and everything in the kingdom it's like a wheel as long as this wheel and i'm giving and god is giving to me and i'm giving back the wheel is running let me tell you as soon as you stop giving that wheel gonna dry up. This is in word. The, the, it's like a flow that happens. And I've seen this many times. But the minute you stop giving is when that wheel just stops. And you gotta get back on that wheel to keep flowing. So for you, Sierra, I've had so much um, pushback in the class. I'm coming back to sit. I'm telling you. Sit in it. Many people are called the kingdom finances. And you gotta be able to manage money, finances. Not saying you gotta be all of it but you have to know your finances to be able to pour it back out in the kingdom and that's why the enemy comes to finances because he knows the, the the threat that we are with money and finances because you can pour back and help other people you can pour back and help churches you can help people grow at a faster rate when somebody breaks through and they are able to fund the kingdom in a way that people may not have even thought of um but this is what he's leading me listen everybody talking about finances I need to step out and do my Facebook Live. Look, and I see you doing your Facebook Lives in the Keisha. Like, I see you pop up every morning or so, but I'm telling you, like, that consist. Like, imagine you, Nikisha, you on here and that you're consistent in your prayers. And somebody calls on you like, listen, we want you to come to our church and pray. <gasps> we want, now you booked and busy all over the place because somebody saw you doing something that you had been working on. And now you're not afraid of it. This is what you've been doing. You, you pray. You prophesy. You do this. Like... And that's what God is trying to get us to a place where when people start to call on us, people start to bring our name up, there is no fear because you're just going to go out and do what you've been doing. You're just going out to do what you've been doing. You don't have to do anything different. It's just like with David. Like, 
He was just doing what he was doing. And they called his, his name was brought up. They were looking for everybody. This is the one. This is the one. No, we looking for David. His name was brought up. And all he had to do was do what he was already doing. So if you do what God has been telling you to do, when your name gets brought up, you just do what you've been doing. It's, that's it. So get used to doing what God has called you to do. For me, this is what he taught me to do. This, you meet me on Clubhouse, I do it over there. I, I just do. So if somebody calls me right now, all right, cool. This is what I do. So I'm going to go do this. You get what I'm saying? But it's in the repetition. It's in you doing it. Where you get comfortable. And it's just who you are. And it's just what you do. And I hear David right now. Like they called. They His name was brought up. I'm hearing this right now. Many of you like. God is like. I'm trying to bring your name up. But I just want you to get consistent in that thing. So people know who to call on. Oh. We are looking for Sierra. She's this powerful prophetess. And when she come on. She come on with so much power. We looking for her. We know she goes live on the page. We know she's in the group and everything. We're looking for her. If you're not on your post, if you're not on your guard, if you're not where you're supposed to be, people can't find you. And this is what God is saying for many people who you know God has called you to do something. People are going to start looking for you. Are you going to be in your position? Are you going to be on your post? It's like those guards outside those buildings where they have on the hat and all of it. Like, they on their post. Are you on your post? That's all I'm thinking about. Um, I have to go back to the replay. Yeah, it'll be on here. Let me finish this up, y'all. I gotta get my son. He's not going to daycare. He's not going to. What is it? What is he doing Wednesday? He does tutoring on Wednesdays, but he said he didn't want to go, so I gotta hurry up. Um, usually I have until 4:20 Wednesday, but he didn't want to go. He said he missed me. So if you handle, if you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, mm, if you have, we talking about finances, right? If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity. Why should you be trusted with the eternal, eternal treasures of the spiritual world? And if you have not proven yourself faithful with what belongs to another, why should you be given wealth of your own? Mm. If you haven't been faithful managing the little, if you haven't been faithful managing the little things, the little money, the little finances I've given you, why should you be given huge wealth? Why should you be given a big ministry? Why should you be given a big boom in business? Why should I give that to you if you haven't shown me that you have, you're not faithful with the little things? This is where we are in this season, y'all. It's being faithful in the little things. So get on your posts. Get back to doing what you were doing. Stay consistent. We have a membership program. You guys probably see the link here. Um, I put it here. So I'm calling to the people who have empires. But it's not always that. That's my main person. I'm Right now we're doing a 30-day content challenge. 30 days. We're pushing it out. The ladies putting the content out. We're doing it. People are growing. Social media platforms are growing. People's personalities are changing from putting content out. Like people, people are, I don't know if Amber on, Amber was backed up a little bit. She was like seven days behind us. This girl, the, the, uh, the way Lord told me is that he said, you have the anointing of discipline that will begin to be imparted to the people who are working with you. This girl came back from seven days of being late. She was posted, supposed to post every single day, seven days behind. She came back and she's like, ooh, I caught up today. I said, girl, how you make all these videos that fast? She caught up. So if you know you called to, you struggle with consistency, struggle, you need accountability, you need other people around you to do it, that's what we're doing in the membership program. I don't have a link. Let me see. It's at the top, but let me, I don't put it, I don't put it here. Y'all, my son going to be mad at me, but I'm going to drop it here. Just in case somebody want to grab it or somebody watches this later, listen, this is where God has me right now. He said, don't focus on anything but that. Because this is what's teaching people how to get that get that work done. Um, so that's what we're doing in the membership. We're meeting tonight for anybody who wants to join us today. Look, Amber 33, right? Regina's in the membership program. Like, Amber came back, y'all. She was like seven days behind. And I don't know, that's... Amber, I mean, she came back and she caught up with us and... She caught up. So Regina will tell you. She's in the membership program. She caught up. But I know the Lord began to tell me is that the anointing of discipline that's on me is being imparted to people. And that's why people are able to move and run like they've probably never been able to do before. So I'm looking at the... I just dropped it if you guys want to check it out. We meet every Wednesday. There's a call every single Wednesday. Um, so I'm excited. But like I said, we're going to do a free vision board party March 23rd. It'll be March 23rd. And we're breaking it down. And it's not your typical vision board. God gave me a whole teaching in the word on how to teach this so people understand it. So that one will be free. It's next week. I got to get my son. So look, I'll be on my post next Wednesday. 
time is a little iffy, but we're going to say around 2.30. We're just going to say I'll be on around 2.30. Um, so I'll be here every Wednesday because I'm not playing games. Safer with the little. Okay, we're about to see it. If you want to run with us, you can click the link there. I'm about to get my son. Um, get connected to everything. So, yeah, y'all, click that link and get connected everywhere. All right, let me go get him. I'll be back next week. See y'all.